So before we dive into today's episode, uh, I had to record this in about 15 segments, so I apologize if the quality is a lot less than what you used to, in my opinion. Bit of a shit episode. Um, I got a noise complaint halfway through by one of the very angry neighbors who was not happy about the 4am war crimes. So I'm going to have to change them, uh, basically recording schedules. Anyway, regardless, apologies. Hopefully tomorrow's episode will be a little bit better and without interruption. Welcome back, everybody, to RimWorld. Today, I've been doing a little bit of an experiment in uh, in a secondary save I've set up in this 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 lovely place here. But you kind of see from the, the from the preview there that I've been messing around with Glutternet, kind of working out how that works and how that might play into this current series because mod I've had no experience with whatsoever. But I didn't want to dive into it blind. I wanted to kind of know how it works so that we could obviously. When we get it to that point, be able to set it up straight away without me fucking around with menus for 40 minutes. Anyway, I'm trying to skip forward a little bit in time as well so that we can get Robo Daddy out of his psychic trainer and back into action, seeing as he's been in there for genuinely the best part of, what, like 20 days now? Because um, it turns out that the training apparently doesn't stack. It doesn't tell you all of the training at once, only what's going to happen currently, which is a little bit of a worry because it means if we train one of his, like, say we queue up a transcendent ability and a woken ability, it might only save three days, and then when it goes up to the next one, it might end up being two weeks. So we'll take everything with the psychic powers. We'll take one at a time, but I want to make sure we actually make good use of all this time he spent in that pod as well. So we'll try and get that sorted by today. I want to check out some mods that obviously we haven't previously before now it is wave currently uh i suppose technically it's currently wave 57 i've cranked the difficulty up bearing in mind yesterday was was pretty easy we're getting to the stage now where i think we can afford to crank the difficulty up given our our base our reinforcements some of our traps that we've got going on as well we have a fairly sizable raid what difficulty are we playing on now bear in mind with wave base survival right we are playing on merciless basically with wave-based survival the difficulty isn't really the important part what is the important part is the points that come in per wave but bear in mind because we're playing on merciless now it'll have effects on things like plant yield and and mining yields and things like that so that is something worth remembering it will actually add difficulty even though the majority of the raids in wave-based survival are i think they're actually only determined by wave-based survival itself now i've actually done some changes to the kill box i started to install some i don't know if you can really call them turret upgrades or anything like that oh shit is that unlocked uh how are they meant to get in then fella Oh, I suppose they'll come through the through the through the corridor, won't they? Okay. Well, I guess we can test if this works now, and that's that's something. Um, we can find out now if if enemies can still go through forbidden doors. I assume they would, because obviously, why would the enemy give a shit about whether or not we've forbidden a door in our colony? Hopefully, they can get that open, and hopefully, in that time, the builder bots, the omni bots, whatever, will get over there and finish off the last of our turrets. Right, okay, this is gonna be pretty interesting. Let's just leave you there for a second. Now we're kind of hoping for a couple of things. Number one, that they won't attack the. Number one, that they won't attack the uh, uh, vent, ga uh, the, the, the obviously are going to vent the gases of the corridor. Number two is that we'll be able to fit everybody in there before they get to the other door, which is something I didn't really consider previously. But of course, if, if we're waiting on these guys to come in and we've... Okay, we're going to have to detonate it when they start passing the last bit of gas here. Otherwise, the, the people at the front are going to get through. But the only issue is, of course, the airlock is still open. Man, we kind of need to make the corridor longer. So what I'm thinking then is, uh, before, before the start of next raid, this won't take 30 seconds to pull off, luckily. We'll dig through here, and we'll dig another route up there, and maybe have them enter via that section. That way it wouldn't matter. I mean, we could potentially have a raid double the size we've got right now. They should be able to all fit in at once there. I'm going to go ahead and activate it. Let's get you to detonate those explosives. God, I hope this works, because we put a lot of effort into this shit. The only issue is I think the gas is going to escape straight away from the from the vents, right? Uh, is it is it working? Hi on Yayo. Uh, old old gunshot. Barnet jaws. I don't think it's working. <laughs> I mean, there is quite clearly sleeping gas in there. It's just not having much of an immediate effect. It might be again the fact that it's the sleeping gas is escaping from this door down here. That's very weird. Um, didn't really work as intended. Oh, and one thing we have got is I've installed blast turrets. Now, I really might... I, I might end up putting these much further down the killbox as kind of a last resort thing. They fire grenades. So we've got to be very, very careful with how we use these. They do have a minimum range, and they have quite a low maximum range as well. Uh, so, which is why I've kind of tried to line them up with the entrance to the killbox. But to be honest, they're probably going to end up destroying a lot of shit that we otherwise want to loot. Is this working? I feel like our gas is just not working, is it? You can't... Oh, there we are. So we got tired. Okay. I was going to say it would suck if for three experiments in a row we've had a really disappointing kill box change. I'm hoping when they're in and this door shuts, it might make some difference to the... What the hell was even that? <gasps> right, that's it. No more holding fire. Kill them all. 
that that was a little bit dangerous. Is this thing able to fire? Uh, auto auto attack. Go go go. Okay, we've got to watch out for doomsday rockets. I didn't consider that before. I will admit. Oh no! Fuck! Good God, they already did a number on us there, didn't they? Wow. Oh, is this door now closed? It's about to close. Good shit, good shit, good shit. Already unconscious. Certainly doesn't look like it. Oh, one's down. Hey, good shit. Two's down. Three. It's working, it's working. It's just starting to kick in now. Hey, there we go. Look at that, it's actually working. I'm pretty happy about that. Now, one of the big difficulty changes I've made, and I've, I forgot to mention this, is that using the miscellaneous modifications mod, you can actually adjust when raiders flee. I've changed it from... So, so with this mod, it makes it 50%. Or, sorry, I should say by default, it's 50%. But with this mod, I've been able to make it 90 to 100% of the raiders need to die before they'll flee. So the raiders will fight harder, and they'll also hit us harder now. But given that we dealt with that entire raid with a little bit of gas... I feel like we've done a good job. And the question is, how long will they stay asleep for? Can we now vent the gas back out, do you think? And be fine with that. You stop firing. Yeah, I think he actually has. Now, as they retreat, I assume they're also going to get... Oh, one of them's holding the door open. Hang on. Let's see if we can unforbid that. So they're the... Is this thing going to start sucking them up again? Um, I mean, they're dead. I don't know why they're not being pulled into the... Ah, that's why they're not being pulled into the... There we go. There we go. Hey, perfect. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so wait for these last people to go out cold. I assume as long as the gas is in there affecting them, they're going to remain out cold. Then what we'll do is we'll vent the gas back through into the storage containers. Then we'll... Then we'll kick these guys out into the prison. This works so fucking well. It's a shame we've only got one person to obviously carry him back and forth to the prison. What we might also want to do here then is throw in a couple of doors along the way. Just along the route to allow us quick and easy access to... To hauling them out of the kill box. Wow, that works so well. Holy shit. Well, we might as well go ahead and uh, we want to flip the switch on this one and then lower the switch on that one. So make sure we disable the gas venting into the kill box first. Man, that's so cool. I really, I quite like remote tech now that we've messed around with it a little bit more. I think I might find a permanent place in our in our next playthroughs. The question is, is it going to vent it all? Maybe there's a limit to how much you can have. Um, I you think Rebel Mummy will be affected by the sleeping gas? I assume so, given that she's just a... I mean, she's a, she's a robot. She has to eat. She has to sleep the same as every other colonist. Uh, I think there's a limit on how much gas we can vent out there. We might have to go and manually prop these doors open for a second. There we go. That'll do it. Oh, God. You might want to move away. Oh, God. Yeah, definitely move away. Maybe four canisters are <laughs> it's a little overkill. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Okay. We're back in things. Sorry, I had to take a very unexpected cut there because of... Um, <laughs> Basically a noise complaint from the neighbor complaining that my war crimes were too loud. To be fair, it was 11 o'clock at night. So I've waited a few hours to 3 a.m. So now we can make war crimes peacefully and wake up the whole neighborhood now. Anyway, um, so what are we looking at here? So I think the kill box was pretty much a success. I've got a couple of complaints with it. Obviously the... I think we went a little hard on the gas, to be honest. I, I, I didn't want to under gas it because obviously then it kind of defeats the whole point. I feel like you can only over gas these things. But it did end up being way too much because now we've got to vent it all out and I feel like it's just gonna it's gonna be a massive pain in the ass in this so what I'm thinking in the future then is maybe just use one maybe two gas cylinders in the same room as an external thing and then have vents along it to vent it straight back out outdoors and let it dissipate that way because this is going to take a while just now to wait for the gas to dissipate before we can even send Robo Mummy in to tidy this place up so kind of shot ourselves in the foot with that one I will admit but that's all right it's not too bad and again we got a lot of prisoners so I assume we can just yeah we can just capture them straight away they do count as downed there rather than just anything else right it looks as if it's starting to dissipate there now so we'll go ahead and uh what are you doing Voitech you weird man we'll go in there and start getting the prisoners out but my god <laughs> what a mess we made. Obviously, we're not going to be able to capture all these people with just one person. That's just not going to... Oh, poor hauling bot. That's just not going to happen. But I'll capture as many as we possibly can. Out cold recovering. Okay. Well, this has been, what, like three hours since the raid now? Four hours. So they're doing they're doing okay. But we've got to kind of keep an eye on them. Just max 10%. I want a timer for how long it is be between them being downed and getting back up. Looks if they're all starting to get back up now, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's not ideal, is it? With two people, we're not going to be able to capture an entire raid. Um. Ah. D uh, that might be an issue. You know what? You you stop firing a minute. Hold fire, hold fire, hold fire. Um. Yeah, this has kind of gone a bit horribly, hasn't it? Okay, well, let's get you... Let's just get you out of there before you get shot. Fuck. Um, they're all waking up, and for some reason, they're all heading in our direction. Yeah, this is not... This has not been ideal. 
This has not been ideal at all. What the fuck was that? Antimatter grenades. You're using that as your default weapon. I'm going to have to strongly disagree there, fella. I'm going to have to strongly disagree. I mean, this has just ended up being a massive mess, hasn't it? Just ended up... All we did was save the enemies up and then unleash them on the base after we kind of stood down. Okay. Um. How can we... How about we keep the same design we've got, but we stagger the switches, right? So instead of... I, I, we had way too much gas at one go and not enough to last capturing all the prisoners. So what we really need to do is segment it, right? So take what we've got now. Maybe put doors between each section. Flood one section at a time with gas and then empty one section at a time both in terms of prisoners and gas. So maybe do section one down here, take all the prisoners out of section one, keep the gas pumped into section two while we're moving those guys over, then rinse and repeat. The question is, though, what the hell are we going to do with 80 prisoners per raid? Um, I mean, I guess irradiate the fuck out of them is is the obvious answer there. I'm just going to let these guys go. We'll let that one, t we'll let that one clear up. But look, we know it works. That's the important thing. So I'll, I'll do some design revisions on that one and we'll sort of see how it goes. Bear in mind if they do manage to get through the killbots, because that's the other thing I wanted to bring up here. They did obviously do a significant amount of damage. Probably the first raid that's actually really done a lot of damage here. They turn up with triple rocket launchers, doomsday rocket launchers. Managed to wipe out a good chunk of our turrets. Both of the thunder guns were killed from that one. So we've got to be very careful. We might even want to start building them out of hyper alloy. Or we do have access to that cosmic weave, don't we? With the uh, cosmic alloys from the cosmic forge. Which may or may not be better. We'll take a look here, because obviously I can't. Can't speak to it, because I've never used this mod before. Let's take a look. Reinforced wall. Have we got, like, cosmic... Cosmic alloy reinforced walls give 10,000 hit points versus hyper alloy reinforced walls that give 12,000 hit points. So it's slightly weaker than the hyper alloy. So for the time being, we might as well just stick to using that rather than the cosmic forge stuff. You know what? I bet we wouldn't even have to worry about pumping the gas out. Because if we set these doors where we're going to go in and obviously grab the prisoners... I think just the just going in for a second, grabbing the prisoner and running out first, so it would drain a little bit of the gas anyway. But secondly, it wouldn't probably have time to affect our people before they left the kill box again. Because bear in mind, they got all the way to the top section up here before they were knocked down by the gas the first time. I think we'll go ahead and remove the secondary gas vents. And then even maybe go as far to even remove the cable to, to not confuse things too much here. Um, yeah, and then we want to keep the switch on this one. Because obviously we want to be able to toggle off the vents so they're not constantly pumping gas. Although I suppose they won't pump gas until we've... Actually, we don't need to do that because, of course, we'll just keep them undetonated until we need to pump the gas through. Yeah, I think that works fine, to be honest. Okay, um, we might as well go as far to take the switch off of there as well then. Hmm, the better way to do it still would be kind of how we've done it here. But have it in two sections. So you see we were, we were drilling the secondary wall. We could have a, a door at the bottom where they enter it. We could gas this first room as they all go unconscious in the first room. We then activate a second load of vents, pushing it into the next section and section each part of the actual entrance, the kind of maze area, with doors. That way we could slowly push the gas through to the people behind. That would also work. It, it's as complicated as you want to make it. We don't really need to make it that complicated, particularly because we've only got two people. We can't capture or handle this many prisoners anyway. And we're basically just asking right now for a prison break, aren't we? You might remember vaguely yesterday, I entertained the idea of... And, and actually, we went ahead with setting up a settlement specifically to rear and send us animals to experiment on. Well, today, we've just received our first shipment of animals. I've been, I've been kind of doing a little bit of colony management between episodes here. We've been given one capybara, one cassowary, one grizzly bear, a friend for Voitep, perhaps. Cat, arctic wolf, DK drake. A DK drake. Okay. A one ravager, one squirrel, and one doe, a deer. Uh, a female deer, by the way. Where are we? Ah, there they are. What the fuck is that thing? Okay. Two of these quite clearly take my fancy. That's right. It's the squirrel and the cat. No, no, no. Obviously, the DK drake. Uh... And the fucking Ravager, whatever that is. This large, genetically engineered insectoid was part of the Black Hive, an artificial ecosystem of insectoids designed to fight mechanoid invasions. Huh. That's fucking insane. Um, and we also got the Decay Drake, which is a large, winged, flightless lizard. Uh, a nauseous cocktail of volatile pheromones that accelerate the rotting process of plants, turning vegetation around them into... Oh, someone told me about this. We can make... You can, like, make beer from them or something crazy like that. Um, they, like, ferment uh, shit and turn it into alcohol, basically. Cool. Now, 
I don't want them fermenting anything. I don't want this thing ravaging mechanoids for me. Oh, well, we might, but what I'm thinking is we keep these two and maybe butcher the rest. We might keep the grizzly bear as a pet for, as, as a friend for Voitech. Now, this is where the, honestly, the genetic engineer would come in really handy. For the time being, we'll keep them. We'll put them in the nuclear barn. We need to build a proper barn, don't we, at some stage. But we'll stick them in here along with the other animals. And for the time being, we'll hang on to them. When we can extract genetic material from them, Whenever Robo Daddy wakes back up, which should be today, we'll get all the ones that we don't want to keep butchered. So probably everything but, again, the bear, the drake, and the ravager. We'll get the rest butchered. We'll extract their genetic materials. And then we'll use them for crossbreeding in the future. Now, somebody said, apparently... Well, there was also a, a, a comment on yesterday's episode that said, basically, don't give up on the Voitech dream. Even though we can't strap platforms to him, we can still fully mechanize him. You know, we can give him all the crazy architect limbs with the crazy architect implants, the armoring, the weapons. We can give him power claws, crazy shit like that. So he might not be an effective long-range character, but we could turn him into a proper frightening robo-bear, which I think might also work. Farmer Voitech might get his day yet. And then some of these other animals we could we could mess around with. Really, we're looking for something with arms. Again, a gorilla would be the ideal thing. I wonder if it... I wonder if it tithes animals based on the biome it's built in. Do you think it's worth just quickly setting up a second colony in a rainforest? Just to see if we can get a gorilla. I'm thinking we just stick one down over there. Go for it. Why not? The return of the king. <laughs> He's been gone for days and he just walks out as if nothing's changed. Still got his go frenzy. So he is now fully upgraded in terms of psychic potential. He's got all of his focus, all of his energy. Now we need to actually give him some fucking abilities. So unfortunately he is going right back in that chamber. Because I'm not wasting... I, I'm not wasting the best part of, like, 10 in-game days getting him into this situation if we're not going to immediately use him. So we've got Phoenix. Uh, draw on psychic abilities to heal themselves when I need. I think that's incredible. You know, activates close to death. We can only give him two. We've got that. We've got Mind Fortress. Um, immune to psionic abilities, but it will make them unable to use active abilities. Or we've got Psy Rally. Um, friendly pawns around the Scion. That sounds good. Yeah. Damage will interrupt casting. So we stick it behind some embrasures. We give Robo Mummy or whoever else, Voitech, maybe some psychic bonuses. And he sits there and buffs them up. That seems completely on brand for a character that's capable of violent. I think we, sh I think we should do that. Now, what have we got in terms of Awoken abilities? Wow, there's a lot. Oh, I think we've actually looked at a couple of these, haven't we? Um, perfect Capacitance. Um, it's an advanced meditation technique that increases maximum Psy energy. Um, must already be trained in Psy Capacitance. Right, okay, so certain abilities require obviously other abilities to unlock. I've talked about that briefly before. Mind Soothe. Um, right, okay, so we can bring them out of a mental state. We've already kind of got a mod that does that. Psy Heal. Uh, heal injuries on the target. Might be good if he can use it on himself, obviously. Mind Link. A portion that uses skills while active. So we could give Robo Mummy maybe some of his crafting abilities. Because he's got 20 crafting, never uses it. Interesting. We've got Precision. Increases damage. Obviously, completely pointless. Precognition. Damage dodge chance is actually pretty good. I think I might start with that one. Inspire. An inspiring thought. I mean, they've both got such high moods. I feel like that one's a waste of time, too. And then we've got suppression. Um. None of them are quite as... Uh, what's the best word for this? Not, not quite as bombastic as I expected. You know, no big... Psy powers. Uh, I was kind of expecting... I will admit, this is kind of mental disciplines rather than Pokemon psychic abilities. You know, I was expecting this guy to be M Mewtwo flipping people off, but apparently not. Um, what have we got over here? Psy trance, Psy forging, Psy defense. And then these are all of our subconscious abilities, aren't they? Man, this is a hard choice. I feel like, why don't we start with the transcendent abilities? I feel like Psy rally, we have to do. And I feel like Phoenix, we have to do as well. How long will that take? Let's just chuck him in and we'll see if the, if the first one's going to take a while. Then I might, we might pull him out and maybe do it Five days? Oh, God. I can't... I can't leave him in there for another five days, can I? Fuck. No, look, we need to We need to actually get some work done. Get him out of there. This isn't going to kill him, is it? <laughs> Kick him out midway through his training. Gives him brain damage. All right, he's good. We'll forget about that for the time being. We'll forget about his side training for the time being. It's, it's been a long time since we've seen him. I don't want to immediately throw him back in storage. We've got a lot of research to be getting on with. So, one thing I want to do... I know I queued up all this shit now. I feel like an idiot because I'm going to remove it all and instead do Glutonet. Um, I did kind of say a couple of episodes ago, look, let's not bother with Glutonet because we've already got so many other bonuses. But Glutonet is actually kind of cool now that I know how it works. Um, and it does give bonuses to other things as well as, like, power generation, for example. Um, even minor things like bed comfort is actually really good. Now, it will also give us access to all the cybernet 
bionics, which is primarily why I want to get that done, so that we can make, we can connect Voitech to the internet to <laughs> to allow him to be a bit more effective in combat. Anyway, um, what do we need then? So I think we probably just want to get your basic basic cybernet stuff. So we'll just go down all of these routes. It's probably going to take fucking ages. What do we start with? What do we just do the research one to start off with? And then maybe get some of the other research things done. Um, these are actually really good. We'll get those as well. And then efficiency too. That'll, that'll be a good ground for our network. Now, if there's any other things that can help with research speed, I'll just type in research speed, see if there's anything else. Scientist cabinet. See, we don't have that either. Let's queue that up. Let's get efficiency going right now. That way we can afford to put Robo Daddy in a casket for weeks on end, giving him psychic powers. Now, before we do anything else with this guy, counts as refreshing sleep, which is pretty good. Uh, I want to install... Oh, he can actually get the, uh, the weaponry. We can replace both of his hands with miniguns and then both of his shoulders with rifles. That's incredible. What I want to add are things that give more rest bonuses so that you can just sit up and constantly research. Neurocalculator in the brain. We've already got circadian assistant. I don't know that we can add a neurocalculator as well. What does that do? 20% research speed. Obviously, we need that. Um, we've got healing enhancer for the torso. What I want to give him is also an electronic brain power, which I believe also gives... Blood filtration, consciousness, sight. We can install an AI into his brain as well. Fuck it. Why not? Now, I want to give him livers. Because some of the Arcotech livers, if we've actually got any more, I'm almost certain we've got some here. There we are. Um, is it the advanced medical liver? They give rest rate. No, it's not that one. Uh, there is another one that gives 50%, uh, or, or I should say lowers tiredness gain by 50%. What a complicated way to phrase that. Uh, lets him stay up for 50% longer, basically. Now, you might notice the game is also laggy as all fuck right now, probably because it's got about 50 robots to deal with, loads of mechanoids, a shitload of turrets, a load of prisoners, and now a load of animals as well. What I'm going to do is we're going to go over to the meat grinder. I'm going to say butcher creature, no animal corpses, no hybrid of paragon corpses, only human-like. Good friend of mine, that's all we're eating anyway here. That way we can kill the animals, we can stick them in storage, and it will help lower some of the lag. But it means that we can keep their bodies frozen until we've unlocked the genetic testing stuff. So that cat, that can go. Um, cat can go. Warg 1, I mean, we've had you for a while, but I would rather just use you for... <laughs> I'd rather use you for genetic experiments. Arctic wolf, capybara, we've got squirrel, cassowary, doe. The date, the, the, the drape we've got to keep because that's really cool. Thermodon was actually really disappointing. wasn't what I thought it would be. Farmer Voitech, got to go, I'm afraid. Obviously not. Um, Ravager, Mycoi Colossus. Oh, man. We're still, we've still got a lot more animals than I really want to here. I feel like the Mycoi Colossus with enough, with enough surgery would be way more impressive than Voitech in terms of, in terms of a combat animal. Okay, you know what? That's what we're going to do. No longer, no, we're not going to affect Voitech anymore. You know, we had a plan for him. It didn't work. Okay, that's, that's the end of it, really. But this guy, though, has one, two, three, four, five, six legs. And we can replace every single one of those legs with Arcotech legs. And each one of those legs will have three modules that we can install Arcotech bits and bobs into. This could be much, much better, in my opinion. So we're going to turn Mycoi Colossus 1 into a Battle Colossus. We need a name for him. Comment section, that's down to you. You're much better at naming the animals than me. Right, so how many... What, what planets can we actually install in this guy right now? We've got four Arcotech foots. Of course, the most prioritized thing. Um, so we've got two Arcotech legs there. Let's start getting this guy cyberized. I like this idea. What I might even do is, is force him to stay in this kind of area so we can keep more of an eye on him. I don't know that we'd ever miss him. Oh my god, he's got he's got loads of fucking eyes as well. Oh, cool. Oh man, we can do so much to this thing. <laughs> oh no, you've given me the keys to the kingdom here, video game. Okay, let's start by replacing his front legs with Arcotech legs. And I guess I'll queue up another four legs. Wait, it's... He's got six eggs in total. Yeah, replacing two. Right, got it, got it, got it. Here, I'm going to clear off all of this crap, and we're going to start from fresh. We're going to try and get a fully cyberized Colossus. I think that's going to be very, very cool. And how many eyes did he have as well? Was it six? Was it four? I think he's got six just based on the actual portrait here. It's a shame you can't see a breakdown. Just like his... It's a shame you can't just see what he's got. Like seeing all of the health conditions, and then we know what exactly we've got to upgrade. Pretty sure you could do that using dev mode. I'll see if there's a mod for it. It might be good just as a mod that you can toggle on and off occasionally. Um, right, so eyes, eyes, eyes. Left first eye. Uh, right first eye, second eye, third eye. Right, so we need six eyes as well. Fucking hell. What I'll do then is I'll make a zone for Arcotech. I'll make a zone for Bionic. And I'll make a zone for the animal implants that you get from genetic testing. Just so that we can kind of... And again, I'm not going to put them on shelves or on machines or anything. Just so that we can visualize what, we are, what, what we're actually working with. It'd be a lot easier to see what we do and don't have if it's just lying on the floor rather than on a shelf or in some deep storage or something. You fucking stockpile. 
Thank you. Much appreciated. Right. So in this one, we'll put Bionics. I need material. Oh, shit. Are we out of medicine again? Um, we've got one medicine. Ah, oh, shit. Does that not count, though? Can we not use regular herbal medicine for... I guess not for brain surgery. Okay, so why do we not have medicine is probably the next best question. Um, make neutroramine. Oh, did I never set up a medicine bill? I think I set up a medical... Uh, what we might not have is cloth, strangely enough. Yeah, we've got plenty of neutroramine. Um, then we need herbal medicine and... Let's go ahead and just turn this to output, and I'll see if I can get this thing churning out some medicine for us. Oh, weird. Now we have enough resources. I mean, I haven't finished setting up the medicine production. They can just do it now. Strange. I wonder if it was in uh, some sort of storage that was inaccessible, perhaps? Very weird. Anyway, this one, when it's built, will be the thing, the, the output for the cloth there, and we'll see if we can get some immediate medicine coming along. Um, what are you carrying there? Neurocalculator. Oh. <laughs> um, don't worry about it too much. Maybe one of the prisoners... Uh, or maybe somebody died and uh, dropped some medicine, perhaps, in the kill box? The brain pal work? Oh, it did, but it removed the circadian... Uh, whatever it was called. Not the half-stepper, the other one, the assistant. Bollocks. Oh, that's such a shame. I didn't know it would replace that. Well, we can have the brain pal and the neurocalculator. I feel like that's probably better. Um, particularly when we finish the glistenet stuff. That would just give... The hell's going on there? Oh, one of the prisoners went nuts. That would give us the ability to... <laughs> to automatically uh, to, to, to do research a lot more effectively anyway, so it should make up for the lack of rest that he now has access to. I think that should be good. Really? The prisoners eat stew and you're feeding Robo Daddy kibble. Have that Omnibot shot immediately. Much better. There we are. I don't know why the hell we were feeding them entire stews. That's unbelievable. That's almost not even a war crime. Speaking of war crimes, how dare you, how dare you rebel? We'll teach them a lesson. Just, just... Give him a dosage. Give him a dosage, or <laughs> maybe maybe a couple of dozen. What the hell do we install into poor slots, then? If anybody knows, please let me know, because we've got the front left poor module slot, and uh, we've got Arcotech feet, which I assume would go in that, um, but apparently not. I don't know what we install in the poor slot. I'm just going to quickly pan through here. No, I can't see anything. If anybody knows, that would be that would be great to find out, because otherwise we've got Voitech and both the Micro Colossus with missing modules. He's actually getting through this Glitternet research much, much faster than I expected, so I've actually started building an expansion on the base, perfectly mirroring the other side. It doesn't look like it, strangely enough. It seems like this room is a lot bigger on this side than it is on this one, but I've measured it and double measured it. Um, so that, that's kind of symmetrical now, which I thought would be a nice little pattern to go for. We'll turn this one probably into the Glitternet server room, so it it's, doesn't need that much size. And then this side, when we've mined this mountain out, we'll turn into... The genetic engineering lab, I think. That's probably the coolest thing we could do for it. Are you running out of power? What the fuck is going on there? What? Good excess 18,000 watts. Oh, because that's because the power's off. Ah, shit. Um, keep it on the reactor here, because the longer that the reactor has it matter being injected without it being expelled, it will take damage. Why is, did we lose power? I haven't changed or built anything that has a particular power drain beyond what we've already been using. Huh? <laughs> we've also got a shitload of energy stored. What's... Oh my god, the batteries. I had to reinstall the batteries. Because where I put them down last time, they were short-circuiting in the rain. You see, we can't obviously finish the roofs off around the nuclear power plants because we just can't get to it. I reinstalled the batteries to avoid them shorting out. And now it's... <laughs> And now they're not on the grid anymore, genius, you fucking fool. Ooh, why are we getting power outages? Yeah, I wonder. I think I'm going to remove the artificial ecosystems. They use 50 watts a piece, and it's obviously adding up because we've got, like, over 400 of them now. More importantly, they're adding quite a lot of lag. Like, we're trying to select them and specifically panning the camera over them. They seem to like the game quite a lot, and I'm not entirely sure why. It's because it's keeping track of every individual plant rather than just growing zones. So what we'll do is we'll just take the roof off of it and we'll turn it into a growing zone instead. Alternatively, we don't need to. We could just use the sun columns. Now, it will only grow... Uh, actually, what was it? 350%? If we want to just get fertilizer going. So if I actually use this as a... Uh, if I actually took the sewage from the thing and drained it out. If we drained it at 25%, it's currently at 66. Use that as fertilizer. We can get up to 500%, so we can actually do better than these, and hopefully it'll help reduce some of this frame rate dip that we've got. Of course, keep the drugs farm, because I'm not an animal. We need his, we need it, we need his Yayo vault. The Yayo vault, I will admit, is a little disappointing. We've got like a pat of Yayo there, and then, <laughs> and then one package. Oh my god, the Triamp kinship. That's the tribal colony again, isn't it? They seem to be unusually clever in their tactics. Doubtful. <laughs> oh. Um. Fucking hell, 138. You know what this is time for. 
I know how much you guys love war crimes. And nothing strikes me as more war crimes than using 11 mortar strikes simultaneously against tribal people. That's a beautiful sight right there. Look at them go. Let's see what let's see the damage. <laughs> oh my fucking god, that's like poetry. It's quite effective. It's a shame they decided to go two separate ways. What are they doing? Melee attacking concrete wall. They're gonna try and sap through, are they? They are sapping through. Have I accidentally locked the doors or done something to prevent them getting through? Door unlocked. Door unlocked. Door unlocked. They're just not going through the kill box method. Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter too much. It did say that they were unusually clever in their tactics. Apparently, their clever tactics involve punching a wall. Thank you, Minecraft. Very cool. Um, we'll let the auto mortars do most of the damage here. I'm sure we'll be fine with these guys on the case. Oh, we can release. Finally, I can get some of my frame rate back. By sicking the scythers and the chaperone mines on them. That's a lot of mechanoids going to war. Holy shit. We're going to have to watch this. This is going to be mad. There they go. I'm so glad that the... Oh, look at how much they've spread out. Fuck. They're going to do a lot of damage. I love how much the mines have spread out there compared to the... Oh! oh. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, sorry, I love that the mines are actually going for the big bulk of the forces there. Because that's going to be... Ma my, my mattress is dazed while I've seen some shit. Right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, this is good. Now, we've got to bear in mind that these mines might end up doing a lot more damage than they're worth. Oh, wow. This is a massacre. This is just a fucking... Oh, my God. I'm pretty happy with the mines, I will admit. Our robots seem to be out on the field repairing the walls as they're being broken. I'm going to call them in. I'm going to call them in. That's, that's not okay. Fuck. Even the corpses are just getting annihilated. Careful. For fuck's sake. I was I was kind of worried this would happen. We're quite literally surrounded here, aren't we? Um, I'm a little bit concerned. And they are attacking concrete walls. I think it's time to unleash her. I think it's time to send her out there. The Scythers are in there. They've engaged the enemy. Robo Mummy I've set to search and destroy. Now, granted, her main weapon right now, the antimatter rifle, is a little disappointing. We could swap her out to the grenade. The oh, sorry, shit. That's not the antimatter grenade. It's cosmic frag grenade, isn't it? That explains why it's doing, like, anti-grain size damage. We've just got to set to search and destroy, which means she'll approach them basically under her own duress. She'll, she'll go up range and uh, deal with the targets how best she deems it. It's going to be questionable. To be honest, they should be fine. You know, it's a, it's a robo-death waifu with an antimatter rifle backed up by a shitload, by a fleet of scythers fighting tribal. We should be good, even if the weapon is a little lackluster. I'm just going to put it on speed 2 and let him duke it out. Now, right anyone we have got raiders not fleeing now until 90 to 100% of them have died. So, we are going to have to claw out every last fucking one, unfortunately. She reached level 20 shooting. What a shocker. Um, I'm hoping the uh, mortars are dealing with the ones around the edge. Looks as if they dealt with those two. Oh, they've done so much damage to the walls. Oh. But they are coming to fight Robo Mummy now that she's out on the floor. Now that she's actually out of the base, past all the doors and everything. I think we need to... I think we need to reassess... Oh, fucking hell, really? Our use of... Get out of there. She just fucking killed herself with grenades. Seriously? Okay, no more cosmic. That, that's ridiculous. Let's see if we can rescue her. We might have to reassess our use of locked doors, though, as a mechanic for bringing prisoners in. It's quite clearly not working. You know, it's just encouraging them to attack the walls, which is in turn causing a ridiculous amount of damage. I mean, it's cheap to repair, but it's going to take a long time. I don't think we're even going to be able to save it here. I hate to say it. We might have to do a... Uh... I mean, what are we going to have to do? We can't even triage her. I'm hoping her mechanite modules will kick in and heal her up. Oh, fuck. She's lost a leg. She's lost a lung. She's lost an arm. <laughs> oh, Christ. Okay. Death in three hours. So we might be able to just get in there and then get her out as fast as possible. Nightling hunting Robo Daddy. You fucking wouldn't. You fucking wouldn't. Oh, no. We're going to have to leave her to die. We're actually going to have to leave her to die. Kidnap her. They cannot leave. They're going to kidnap Robo Mummy. They've, they've actually fucking taken her. We wouldn't have been able to. No. A shocking development. And once again, Robo Daddy was alone. I just can't believe it. What the fuck? Get out of here. I just can't believe it. That's staggering. That's just unbelievable. Then there was one. 
a tragic plot twist for Robo Daddy. His his first wife blew herself up in a kamikaze attack. His second wife blew herself up in a kamikaze attack. I'm starting to see a trend in hindsight. Cosmic frag grenades, fuck them. They are way too dangerous. To be fair, it does sound it that it was dangerous, but when I said search and destroy, I didn't think she'd swap out to a grenade and bomb her own feet. That was just absurd. Um, oh, okay. How, okay, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's go ahead and open this door up. Let's see if we can bait them through the kill box now rather than attacking our walls still because there's so much damage to repair at this stage. We've only got one dude now. Actually leaving or what's going on there? Um, they seem just a bit confused. Oh, yes. Yeah, Fucking hell. Um, it's this one dude who's just very confused. Well, he'll be dead soon. You know, I'm going to tell them to hold fire. Otherwise, we're going to be wasting a shitload of shells on one guy. I'm actually so disappointed by that. Now we're going to have to print a new Robo Mummy. <laughs> we'll start printing. Obviously, I'll try and get the old one back, but we'll start printing a new one just in case. Go on, then. Here's a fucking idea. Why don't we just go all in? <laughs> Why don't we just give her absolutely everything? Tech Prof module gives her a research speed of 600%. We don't have a Tech Prof sub persona core. Which would be, I mean, that would be absolutely mad. Now, I was thinking for research, if you wanted to help Robert Daddy out a little bit, build a settlement specifically for research gain. Now, I wanted to get the upgrades done first, just in case that when I re-rolled her, or just in case when I had things, it, it re-rolled her, you know, like it does with traits. Double passion shooting 18, I'm happy to go for that. What is this one? Oh, this is a haircut. You know, we'll leave it as it is. There we go. So she is going to cost 22 nutrition, 240 plastic, 63 components, 6 medicine, and 1 persona core. Six Glitter War Medicine. I don't think we have. We'll have to call in a Glitter War Trader. And that's going to take one Quadrum six days. We'll see you then. This is going to be a hell of a robot. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there for today. I apologize for the quality of this episode again because of the because uh, of the noise complaint I got earlier. I have had to basically record this in about 15 different sections. I will record episodes earlier. Uh, no, I'll record them later. Yeah, I'll record them later than what I am doing right now. I'll get them done basically in the morning before the episode is due to go live. So it's going to put a lot of pressure to make sure that YouTube works. So that's the only downside to it. But it does mean I'll be able to respond to more comments. So let's see how it goes. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Hopefully this hasn't been too bad regardless of that. And, and we should be back to hopefully some decent quality content tomorrow where our wife does not get kidnapped. Thank you in the meantime to, of course, the insane top tier level patrons for making the series possible in the first place. A shout out today goes to Michael Mullen, Ben Hoffman, Jonah Waters, Crow Skull, Nikki Sticks. My name isn't Dio, Distorted Triangle, Justin Rule, Scars, Siltworm, Sweetsea, Bacon Kitten, Tom Terror 18, Rage Dragon, Taj, Kamara Ishmael, Darpork, Pelvis Presley, Scared Blueberry, and everything one else at the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon for making the channel possible in the first place. Big thank you to you guys. And a thank you as well goes out to somewhere on this list is Blood for the Blood God, Acero, Bokbin, King Snitch Gaming, Udric Haddon, Anchor, Spirit085, Voodoo Mumba, Mr. Awesome, Sam Kears, Don, Monty, Smooth Octopus, Swifty21, and Noobmeister as well for their support over at Patreon. See you guys all tomorrow for getting back to the getting, getting back to the regular flow of things, hopefully.